there it is. Okay, well, I will not try. Okay, let me let me not try to be that adventurous right now, because <laughs> we are going to spend the rest of the time trying for me to. I I, will, I will promise you by by Friday I will know more. Okay, um, in if you go in this one, I wanted to tell you first of all, if you click on this, you will see that I'm using these kind of things. Um, <laughs> there is a reason for it. It 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 keeps you more alert when you see things moving on the screen, as opposed to getting a little bored when I keep talking. Um, movements help your brain remain more alert. So that is good for me as well as you, but also it's fun too. I don't like a, a dense text, you know, for me, I don't like that. But if you click in this, um, you will find information about our class. Um, also, you will probably see from Zoom that our office hours will be right after this class from 4.30 until 6.30 every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right. And we will use this time as well to um, be able uh, to do some extra, extra preparation if uh, sometimes in the class something needs to be reviewed and we don't have time to do it during the lecture, then we'll do it during that time. But that is going to come to let you know. Course textbook is a good book by Matthew Sadiku. When it comes to transmission lines, it does not have very much. So I'm going to have some supplementary notes from me. But it's a good book because it has a lot of examples and very nicely done. So you will be able to see examples and then that's going to be able to help you. Um, as I said, class notes, you will see video electronic applications. Here is something you need to remember, Tap Hat, and we're going to come to this. It gives you here, it, you will see it also as part of the text. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say much here. Um, a, a small application to really create PDFs. So that's going to help you upload things, all right? And then the fact that we're going to be in Teams and I will talk about those. Now, pre prerequisites for this class, I'm sure you know them. It's like basic physics, basic math, basic electrical engineering. Okay, um, going back, home um, screen. These are other resources from the university. I place them there, it's gonna help you. This is where you find the Zoom meetings. You click on that and you get all of the Zoom meetings for this class today and at 4.30, today we start every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, the whole thing. Okay, so you have access to it. Go, going back home, now, every week I have uploaded 14 weeks plus the final. And you will see from each week what we expect to cover. All right. Now, more or less, we're going to cover that, but on the basis of the needs, I'm not going to just turn off, close my eyes and move forward without seeing how you follow, obviously. So we may have to slow down in some places for you to understand more, we may accelerate, you know, there is, so there will be some modification of the things. Uh, um, under, if you, if you click on this one, whatever is next to say week one, and then talks about, this is what we are gonna cover on Friday, say the four forces of nature. It takes you to the first module. You can come to this module also from the modules button. There is a modules button here on the left, you will see, but it comes to the modules. So if I go back though, if I don't want to, um, let, let me go back home and then so that. Now here I have links to different places that are important so I get the link to introduction to top hat but you will see I have moved it so um, let's start with orientation you click on this 
and then it says what are the core the goals of this course this is a very fundamental course all right electromagnetics i know that some of you fear a little bit of electromagnetics all right it's a it's a math it's a little abstract and most of the time you don't know why we do it so i will try to address all of these concerns you may have as much as i as possible and i will keep reminding you why we go through this so here is what happens with these fundamental classes like that we learn we learn a language rather all right and the definitions of the words this is how you should view this class yes it has math yes it has physics what we are trying to do in this class is to take these two worlds of physics and math and put them together. All right, that's what we do in electromagnetics. Physics, you've learned a lot from high school and the first courses that you had here. Math also, you did the same, introductory courses. You've learned math. Now we are gonna try to put them together. And math is a language. Science is a way, uh, it's, it's also, um, in, in other language, science is a, a space of words and concepts that help us understand nature. Math is a very rigorous language to talk about the things in nature, what is happening, all right? Without math, we would not be able, other than just talking like philosophers, we will not be able to do any more than that, all right? And that's what happened in the many thousands of years ago with, especially in Greece, when they started with philosophy, at least for the Western, because there were many countries that had philosophers, all right, around the world, even if at the time they, it's probably it's true that they did not have that much connection. There were many philosophers around the world, but let's talk about the Western type of philosophy, yeah, they understood nature, but they, they did not have the math to make that understanding rigorous. And math started later, much later. But with math, we have been able to express in a very rigorous way what is happening So in, in nature. So when you see math, you don't have to stop that. You have to see beyond that. It's like we learn a language with math and it's difficult in the beginning, all right? Especially if you don't know why you are learning it. So in this class, we will try to use these things and then connect them so you, there is meaning to it. Why is this class important? A lot of people think, oh my gosh, I have to take electromagnetics or electric and magnetic fields and really I don't need it. And the answer is totally, that is not true. If you see what I put here, I'm sure that many of you will have to select one of these areas or your, your uh, profession is gonna take you into a number of those over the years. In your professional life, most probably, you're gonna go through a number of those. And there is an application of what we are gonna learn in electromagnetics in all of these. Now, my area of focus as re a researcher has been here. So as you can imagine, the implementations I will emphasize will not be down here to diagnostic equipment, obviously, but I it will focus mostly in these areas and in wireless. So I will try to do, I, I, I feel a lot very comfortable in this area since I've done all of my research there. However, if you are interested in something other than this, then we'll find a way to get there as well, all right? And I will tell you what I have in mind about that. So in any case, just so you know why I'm focusing in examples here, because I know those. I'm not an expert in the other areas. Teams, learning in teams. Why is that important? I mean, I'm sure everybody has told you why is important to work in teams. The only practical and additional practical argument I will give you is that if you go to work for industry, 
nobody's gonna open a door, a, an office for you, put you there and say, now close the door and then start, now go and work. In industry and in universities, people work in teams. And in a team, working in a team, it does require some learning, all right? We, we do a lot of individual work for 12 years before we come to the university. And we have also been asked to demonstrate our abilities as individuals. When you go to work for industry or for a university, mostly in industry, that's where the change has been happening. And eventually, you will sit in universities at that same extent, is that um, you will not be asked, especially in industry, to demonstrate success or achievement as an individual, but to demonstrate achievement as a member of a team. And the two are not identical. So. To work in a team does require experience and practice. It does require give and take. And it does require respect to the team members, all right? Respect the way we all define it and maybe with some variation. But, so we are going to practice this, but obviously we are not going to forget where we come from, where we have all been comfortable also working individually. So all of the homework I will give you is going to have two parts. One part is going to be individual work. The other is going to be teamwork. And I have uh, uh, divided you in teams. And that was done randomly by the computer, by, the, like, by Canvas. So because I don't, I have, I don't know you, so I, I, I cannot develop the most, the most optimal teams, obviously. If we can these teams, you will have an opportunity in the next two weeks to tell me whether you need to, for a reason, you want to change. And I will try to do the best I can, all right? Um, so one part of the homework every week is going to be individual homework. And another part is going to be team homework. It will be designed a little differently. So the team homework. The team that is made out usually four, maybe there will be a team or two of three people, but we'll try to keep them at four. Every team is going to submit only one solution, all right? And the team is going to get the same individually. The people will get the same grade. In individual homework, of course, it's going to be the traditional way, all right? Individual work, individual grade. Now, um, I always encourage people to collaborate. I don't mind collaborations. As a matter of fact, I like collaborations because our brain learns by socializing the concept. The brain does not learn if you go by yourself, get a book and start doing things without talking to anybody. That's against how the brain learns. And now I have to say, I'm not an expert in brain learning, but my work um, the last five years has focused on the design of intelligence for electronics. And I've read a number of books about how the brain learns. I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a medical doctor. <laughs> so I, so you, you know how far it goes. But I know how the brain learns as a computer. So the brain has short-term and long-term memory. If you put things in the short term and then you leave it there, you will never go to the long term. For a brain to move things from the short-term memory, the neurons of the short-term memory, to the long term, it needs to have enough evidence that you need this information which the brain has put into the short term. All right, so repetition and review. So even if it's only five minutes, let's, let's assume we covered the class today, you go home and then you come back Friday to think of the same thing. I can bet you anything that if you don't open anything until Friday, you come here, probably 70, 60% of what we said, it's gonna be some probably 40% of what we said is not gonna be there. 
60% of the other 20% additional, you will have to work hard to find. For the 40% that is not that you will have to relearn it. So that's not good, all right? It's too much energy to learn one thing. So what is the best way to do it? Is what I'm gonna try to give you in this class. We are gonna have every day an exercise. This exercise, most of the time, I will give it to you after the class. It's gonna probably be five or six minutes to do an exercise. You're gonna take half of the points, every exercise is gonna take 30 points. 15 points you're gonna get just by doing it, and 15 points for doing it correctly, all right? So half it goes just for doing it. Because doing it is important, even if the answer you are giving me is incorrect. It's better to, do, to give me an incorrect answer than not giving me an answer, not thinking about it. So in the day in between, you will have to do the exercises. And at the end of, and there will be very short, and it's gonna be like um, on, on top half, which we're gonna discuss. And you, it's gonna be a multiple, multiple choice, but there will be enough so you cannot just go randomly, all right? You have to think even about it. Just thinking about it is going to keep it there. And if we review it again on next day, and then you have to do the homework, it's gonna be this continuous, your neurons, they, they, they are gonna take this signal, that the spikes that go to the right position, they're gonna make those synapses stronger. That's how it goes. And then from the near memory, it's gonna go to the long memory. And you're not gonna totally be totally oblivious about what we covered in the class by the midterm, right? That would be the worst, to wait for the midterm to start. Okay, so that's the theme, socialization of the concepts. I would like to have you uh, not, not to copy solutions. That's not socialization of the concepts, all right? Not a copying a solution, but us talking about the methodology asking questions of how do you do this? How do you do that? And then implementing those to your problem is something I would love to see. So you can talk with people in your teams or you can talk with other people. What uh, we did in the last class I gave at four, uh, 453 um, in the fall, every class created a group me, the class. And I was there and I could see, you know, all of the discussion was taking place. And if I saw, when I saw that they all got stuck, then I will give them a hint. So that was good because I could see what kind of problems they had in the questions, among the questions. All of the home, of course, homework and midterm and finals and quiz and all of this is all open source, everything. It's open everything. However, where don't copy things, okay? Don't um, ask anybody to solve the problem for you. I have to tell you one thing, and I'm sure you hear that in ethics. It's important, of course, for us to talk about ethics as a high concept. The bottom line is in, in engineering. If you finish engineering without knowing engineering, people die. You need to keep that in mind. All right? It's not like, it's like doctors in a different way. You're not like an artist, you go, you become a bad artist if you do not pay attention and then nobody's gonna buy your pieces, your art pieces. In engineering, people will die if you don't know what you're doing. So please take, make sure you learn. Learning is extremely important, all right? That's why I emphasize. Okay, grading philosophy. I talked a little bit about this. I have everything here what I expect to see, more or less, I think that's what is gonna happen, but as the weeks go by and we see what we get, we see how many exercises we give, how much homework and all of this, then, um, and I will give some bonus points for achieving specific, you can pay attention and look at that, for achieving specific levels of achievement, I'll give you points. And here it shows if the maximum that anybody got is 42.75, for example, all right? Almost a thousand below this, sometimes often even 1,200 below this will get an A. And a thousand below that 
will be a B, or, or a thousand below that will be a C, and so forth. Getting up here is going to be your own doing. You're not going to compete with anybody else to get to the points, those points. You are competing with yourself. If everybody in this class gets between 30 to 100 and 40 to 100, then I will give an A to everybody. And I have to tell you, at this level of my career, nobody's going to make, is going to tell me why. So, and that's how it's going to work. Now, there are expectations for the class, all right? If anybody, it does not matter how well you do in points, but if you miss 50% of any of these, you're going to get an incomplete. So that's the deal from the beginning, all right? An incomplete, if you miss, of course, the meter or the final, but if you miss 50% of this work, not for uh, medical reasons, that is a different story, or for any other reasons. If there is a problem, please share with me so I know. But if for some reason it could go and disappear, I had a, a student in my previous class who did not take the meter, did everything else, and then he, he disappeared in the final. I gave the person an incomplete, never came back to ask me. So I don't know, obviously, all right? But that's the, what we, any questions so far? From those online or from the class? Yes. No, incomplete means that you have to come to me and whatever you missed, you will have to do it. And then I'll give you a grade. Let, let me, so you, you can probably, one second. You can probably say, okay, I can see the final, the meter, and what has gonna happen with that. There was one case of a student, I was in a previous university, another university, who was a very good student and somehow he stopped doing homework. He came to the meter, final, no homework. Okay, I gave the person an incomplete. He came to me and I said, fine, it was summer. The deal was that I gave him homework the whole month of August. He did the homework, I gave him a grade. That's how it works. Incomplete if, however, you don't approach me and I think there is a month, two months or something for the incomplete, it turns into an F if you don't do anything, if you don't try to either approach me and say, I would like to do something, do extra work, do the work that I missed or something else. Now, this happens if I, if this, if people miss work without me knowing why. If you have a medical reason, if you have a family reason, if you have a personal reason, and then that may create problems, please let me know and we will find a solution, at least in terms of this class, okay? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, I may do something different in this class. I was thinking I may give bonus points as we cross the different levels. But so far, the bonus points that I give is like if you do, if you reach 75% of the homework, I give you bonus points. If you go to 85% of the homework, I give you more bonus points. If you go to 95% of the homework, then I give you even more bonus points. So the better you do, the more you get. And the bonus points for the team, if say, for example, that happens in your team homework or teamwork, then the whole team gets the, name, the same number of bonus points. Any other questions about this? Professor, so the bonus points is related to the score or just like the amount of- well, Let me tell you now how it goes. You will get the score and then usually on the basis of the score without the bonus, uh, you're gonna find yourself in a band. Then I will add the bonus points and then wherever, so I will give grades on the basis of these bands without the bonus. And then after you get the bonus points, you will see how you move, usually you move higher if you have bonus points, all right? If you have bonus points in the class, then you will move higher from where you are. So I give you the bonus points after I have decided who is gonna get an A and who is gonna get a B and so forth. And the bonus points will change that grade for you, possibly, 
If you have enough and you move out of your bank. Is that good enough? As an uh, yeah, I, I mean like, uh, so, so the 95% is that's like mean if you get 95% of the score, like if you get 95% of the homework or just finish like 95% of homeworks. No, if you take 95, if you reach 95% of the, um, say if every homework takes 50 points. Yes. And then we have uh, 10 homeworks, for example. So 500 points. If you get 95% of 500 points, then I'm going to give you an extra bonus. Okay. Okay. All right. When you Thank read 75% of 500, you will get that one bonus, 85% a second bonus, and 95% a third bonus. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. And some excuse me, Professor. So, go ahead. Um, excuse me. So, for um, midterms and stuff, that's like the individual points, but there's also team points. So, it's kind of like the homework where there's like a team section and the individual section. It is only the bonus points is not homework and final, but is for homework, for quizzes, for exercises, and for the teamwork. Oh, no, I was asking just like, of, but for the midterm and final, those are just like individual points, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, that's what you asked me. Yes. The final and the midterm will be individual points. Okay. Even if in another class I gave. Okay. Thank you. For us, it's going to be individual. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm moving on. Let me see what time it is. Okay. Now, what I would like to do, uh, okay, let's go to the home and then I will go to Tap Hat. Okay, Tap Hat is here. You see that hat with the bunny? You click on that. And that should take you, it took me to the, the class. I have already imported all the exercises, all right, for the class there, there. Exercise and quizzes. So every day we're gonna, we're gonna do a practice exercise on something totally, I have not put it there. These are uh, real exercises. You know, I, I gave something for the previous class. Let me see here, go to that one here. All right. Um, this is nice for me because I can see um, how you do. I can see who has a problem in something and who doesn't. All right. Because it gives me very nice analytics and um, visually on, on who had problems. And, and then you will see that sometimes if I find the class, I will also, the solutions of this, I will publish them if for every exercise so because that will be nice to um, get to know them, the solutions um if i see the whole class has a problem with something that gives me an opportunity to go back okay it, it gives me like a day-to-day -day, in addition to helping you review material it gives me an opportunity to find out who has a problem with some concepts and then we may slow down a little bit this is kind of of the measure i use every day for that. Quizzes, what is the difference between a quiz and an exercise? Um, quizzes, uh, exercise is based on the base concept. Quiz, it involves previous concepts. Too. It's every, only every Friday and takes double. Every quiz is 60 points, every exercise is 30. In 60, 30% for doing it, 30% for accuracy. If you just do it, you will get 30 points. Excuse me, I said 30%. 30 points. Um, and if you do it accurately, you'll get another 30 points, all right, for a total of 60. Okay. Now, um, how you go there when, if you, you will have to sign up. Um, if you, you have not signed up and you click, it's gonna get you to the top hat front, front page and they will ask you if you want to register and you can do it for uh, one semester or longer. One semester is plenty. I think, but you also can use it for more than one class if you pay for one. It's not like you pay for every class, if there are others who use it. But it's a very good uh, way of getting, and you will see your score, 
or I reduce your score automatically. The only thing is that I will have to move your score to um, Canvas to be able to sum it up. I will do this not every time, but every like month or so. Okay. Um, do you have any, if you have, I'm sure you have not looked at that, but if you have any questions, it will be nice to sign up on Friday so we can do a practice for Friday. There is another thing that I, um, I will ask you to do. Let me, how do I move back? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. Um, today, um, or for until, until Friday, I have asked you to do, uh, I, I gave you, I'm giving you a survey and it's a graded survey like you get for doing it, all right? Um, I will go, you find the surveys under quizzes and here it is. It's a survey though, it's not a quiz. And I will um, tell you why I need this information. Let me do, a, it's a preview here. All right, you get five points for doing this. And I don't need too many words. So using a few words, describe the topic that you have enjoyed learning about, I'm, I'm using a word, learning about the most while at Cambio. I would like to know, um, you know, why, First of all, now that you have been here one or two years rather, all right, your guys junior, two years and some, um, more or less you have a sense of what kind of a electrical engineer you wanna do, is that right? Maybe not, maybe yes, or at least you know something you, lo you like more than other things. Tell me what is it that from the things that you've learned, you like the most? Because I may be able to find a specific application where you will see the use of electromagnetics to that. All right, and we will discuss that, or I will give it to you as a um, part of one homework. I will give you hints. I mean, I will have to do it differently. It's not going to be like solving equations. Or the next one, coming to this class, I would like to know what is your single concern. If you had one concern you wanted to share with me about this class, tell me what it is. Is it the math that concerns you? Is it the physics? Is it whatever it is? Is it because you don't like the class but you have to take it? Even that, I don't care. You know, I, I don't want everybody to become an electromagnetics person. No, I don't want that. I know electromagnetics is important but if you tell me what it is that concerns you, then I may be able to address it or help you in that regard. The other thing, what is the one suggestion you would like to make to me that will help you mostly in this class? If you know already, now you've had already online classes or this kind of strange classes that we get, what is it that uh, will help you from experiences you had before or even from however you understand your needs, all right? I would like to know. Now, I may not be able to address every single one of them, but if I can find a way to address them, that will be great. But I cannot do that without knowing. And then, is there anything you would like to know? This is an opportunity to tell me, I wanna move from this team to another one. I wanna be in a team with so-and-so. I don't, I won't be able to do, you know, if we are 70 students in this class, any combination is going to be 70 factorial. No, <laughs> that, no problem. It never happens this way. But if you have one or few cases here where you will feel more comfortable because you have been in a group with somebody else, you have worked or you're working for another class and then helps, absolutely, I will be, um, I, will, I will try to do my best to address it. Okay. So do that, please. There is a deadline for doing it because I would like, I will take the weekend to read through. Tell me now, since we are here, also files. Um, there is in the uploaded media, there are a lot of files and I will try to organize them. So don't worry about that. I will organize the files, um, but you will have access to all of these files from here 
or from the modules or from both places. Like here, for example, if you click on this one, you will see there will be um, a, a, a blend of um, PowerPoint with some text um, and some of my own writing. Writing when it goes to equations is very difficult to type things. It takes a long time. So I don't want to spend my time typing. But we'll talk, we'll, uh, starting on Friday, and this is about next week, module two. But Friday, we'll start talking about um, forces and fields. And then uh, you may worry, wonder rather, of why we talk about forces before we talk field, about fields. But it's important to understand that without having forces present, no one would be speaking about fields, all right? Because we feel the forces, but we don't feel the fields. We use the fields as a mathematical construct to really work and understand what forces do. We feel forces because of our mass, mostly, all right? Uh, electromagnetic force we don't feel, we'll talk about this because it applies down to um, small molecules, atoms, electrons, it's down there. If we were, if for a moment you were an electron, you, would, you could become an electron, you will feel a huge electromagnetic force. And you would have your orbits because of that. But not now. But we feel gravity, all right? That's another force. We feel it. And um, anyways, we talk about gravitational waves and gravitational fields. We don't feel a gravitational field, but we feel gravity. OK, so we'll talk about this just to differentiate the, the meanings. And then we'll go to coordinate systems, why we need to use coordinate systems, why we use scalar vectors and tensors, What? why is that? And then we go down to, we'll do a review rather, all right? You have seen this before, isn't it? But it's important to review them again. And we'll solve a couple of homeworks on that. Okay, any questions? For the class? Any concerns? Yes. I cannot uh, hear you. No, because the assignments are to happen in a short period of time. I don't want you to do them now. I want to do them when I give them to you. It's going to be like for five or 10 minutes or for like half an hour or for two hours maximum. And it's not going to take more than three or five minutes, but I may give you a two hour window to do them considering. So I'm not going to give them to you one at a time. All right. Any other questions? Yes. No. Any addition is going to be fine. The fundamentals are the same. They add a few things, but we are going to do the fundamentals. It's just that I like this book because it has so nice examples. And also the notation is more mainstream as opposed to some other electromagnetics books where the notation is a little weird. Okay, well, we are for a good semester. We are gonna work together. Um, you should see me like your mentor, not a faculty member who is trying to judge you. There is no judging in learning. And I don't believe in penalties. The brain, in fact, do you know that? That the brain does not learn by penalty. You fear because of penalty but you don't learn. You learn by motivation and motiv motivating people is a um, number posit of positive things that we can do. So I'm not gonna, unless something is totally outrageous that somebody does that I have not seen it, I'm not gonna penalize anybody. I will give you many opportunities and I will try to motivate you to do things. So you should not fear anything in this class. 
That's what I, I, how I see it, okay? And you will be, you will learn a lot better if you don't fear it, okay? So we'll see you on Friday. Office hours every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 4.30 until 6.30, only online. If you have something personal to tell me, send me a note. We'll do a separate Zoom. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. Dr. Kate. Yes. Out of curiosity, what is the uh, honors requirement for the, your uh, honors yes. section? It's going to be a different project for the honor. Okay. I will see how many honor students we're going to have. So it's going to be like another week and a half. Mm -hmm. And I will give them a separate project. Okay. For Thank the you. Honors You're welcome. Hey, yes. Yes. I was thinking, and um, I have sent your name, and um, the other person is Ryan mm -hmm. Mary, who got uh, was another class with me. So in the morning class, you're gonna be in this one, mm -hmm. and then I have given your name. They have added them already, so you can have access to Canvas. Mm -hmm. I will check it out because on Cam um, yeah, on Canvas I cannot. Um, I cannot do the change myself as I could do it with the canvas. Oh, you're yes. excellent. That yes. works. So the other thing is that I have submitted a request for you and for Ryan to be graded. So that is in process too. So you will probably see it next week sometime. I don't know if that was it. Okay. No, it's all, it's all done. It's all, yeah. I know. It's all happening, you know. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. How are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a good weekend, I'm sure. I know, isn't yeah, it? It's I'm gonna starting be... my first capstone, so. Ooh. Kind of nervous. But... And then, what do you do, want to do afterwards? I haven't decided. I something like in the aerospace field, mm -hmm. but I'm not too sure yet. But I'm trying to work to get an internship this summer because I don't have one in line yet. So that's why I'm like been doing like different applications. Yeah, that's nice. So, Nice, um, nice. I'll be graduating in December this year. Oh, I'll be nice. over the semester late. But. So, and then and do you plan, do you want to go to industry? You plan to go to graduate school or um, you don't know yet? Probably into the industry. I would be willing to do grad school if like, someone were to pay for it. Of course, but. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if you, it depends, um, it is possible, especially. Um, you got out and then it depends on what kinds of things you're doing yeah. it is possible that you will that you can find somebody in, yeah. to do that the other thing which um you, that you can do you know personally i think depends on what you want to do of course your career mm -hmm. uh, if you want